God bless you today, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Trey, and I'm so grateful that you chose to virtually connect with us today. I hope that you had an amazing week, uh, and as I pray today that your experience with us here at The Well is a refreshing experience. Listen, we're going to go ahead uh, and move on with our uh, virtual uh, experience today. Uh, but listen, before we go any further, I think we need to pray. Uh, listen, every single week, you know, sometimes people feel that uh, prayer is this ancient tool and term uh, that, that, that can only be used uh, uh, in, in, in certain times. But the truth is, the Bible says emphatically, you ought to pray without ceasing. That simply means every chance you get in every situation you get in, you ought to pray. Listen, brothers and sisters, we are getting ready to pray. And as, as every week, uh, as an affirmation of faith, I have asked you uh, to uh, attach whatever your prayer request is uh, and, and put some affirmation uh, as a signal to God and a signal to yourself and those around you that you believe that God can handle your situation. So brothers and sisters, today I want to do something uh, different today, another affirmation for us today that we're going to attach to our prayer. And it's simply, whatever your prayer requests, God, we're going to believe God. And here's what I need you to say, that he's going to turn my prayer request into a praise report. Say it again, that God is going to turn my prayer request into a praise report. And that simply means, brothers and sisters, that while we are praying about it now, we believe that God is going to turn that request, that prayer request, into a praise report, a report of how God has moved, a report of how God has has his hand has showed up in such a way that it's undeniable that nobody could have done this but God. Would you believe with me today? Would you believe with me today? Whatever that is, I want you to, I want you, whatever you, whatever that is, I want you to say by faith, God is going to turn my prayer request into a praise report. Go, go ahead, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and do that now as your affirmation of faith that today I believe that whatever my re prayer request is, God is going to turn my prayer request into a praise report. Go, go ahead and do that now. Whatever that prayer request may be, no, no matter how big or small uh, that prayer request may be, God knows the number of hairs on our head. And if he knows such a small, minute detail about our lives, then certainly there is no problem too big and there is no problem too small. So brothers and sisters, would you, would you, would you go ahead and say that by faith even now and say God is going to turn my prayer request into a praise report. Go, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and do that now. And brothers and sisters, as we are about to go to prayer, listen, whatever that prayer request is, again, we want you to do the appropriate affirmation. Of course, you know, we welcome you to share in our online community because we believe um, that a church that prays together stays together. So listen, we're going to continue to pray together as a church family. But what I need you to do also, uh, when we go to God, I want you to be praying at home right where you are and as I pray aloud. Because I believe what two or three are gathered together in his name, touching and agreeing, God promises to be in the midst. And though we can't touch physically, we can touch virtually. So listen, I need you praying uh, right where you are. This is not a spectator sport. This, this is a participant uh, sport. So in other words, we've got to pray together. So I'm going to pray out loud, but I need you praying at home, lifting up your voice. So that we can pray together and ask God to bless us and, and bless our prayer requests and literally turn our prayer request into praise reports. Let's pray. God, first of all, for everything that you continue to do, we say thank you. For doors you open, we say thank you. For doors you closed, 
we say thank you. God, we thank you for how you have kept us and given us peace of mind. There are so many, God, that are, have fallen by the wayside because of the stress and the strain of this season that we're in. But God, thank you that you've given us peace of mind. Thank you that you still allowed us to hold on to our joy. And God, we do declare that this joy that we have, that you've given to us, the world did not give it and the world cannot take it away. Now, God, you know the prayer requests that are before you today. You know how there are so many, God, that are among us that are struggling, that are dealing with things. But God, in the name of Jesus, touch right now those prayer requests for somebody that's a family, for somebody that's a friend, for somebody that's their, their physical well-being, their health, for somebody that's some financial strain and struggle. God, help them to be reminded that whatever the problem is, you are not a God of one problem. You're the God who can handle all problems. And so for that, we say thank you. God, we come confessing that we've fallen short of your glory. For your word says all have sinned and come short of your glory. But God, thank you for giving us another chance. So now, God, we ask even your blessings upon our church. Thank you for Amwell Baptist Church. Thank you for over 133 years of service. Thank you for our pastor of 44 nearly 45 years thank you for our leadership thank you for our our team members god thank you for our members thank you for those uh that are part of the world that continue to serve and that continue to help god we thank you for all of the sacrifice and thank you for keeping our church going through this pandemic there are others uh, that have not been as fortunate as we so god we want to say thank you that you've allowed us to uh, not only survive, but continue to thrive during this time. Now, God, I'm praying that you allow in just a little time, just even seven days, that God, that you start giving signs that you have turned our prayer request into praise reports. God, we, we're believing, God, that there are going to be so many praise reports from these prayer requests. That, that, that God, we're not asking you to do it for us, but we're asking it that you do it so we can tell everybody about somebody who can handle anybody's situation. So God, make us your personal ad campaign. Make us your personal uh, public relations people. God, let us go. Give us an, 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 a, a praise report that is so amazing, that is so compelling, God. That when we share our story, people will realize that if it wasn't for you who was on our side, we don't know how this prayer request turned into a praise report. And God, we're expecting and we're believing. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Listen, if you receive that, say amen. Say amen. Say amen. 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 Listen. Listen, brothers and sisters, amen. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead if you, if you receive that type, amen. Listen, uh, we're, 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 we just got through our prayer, uh, brothers and sisters, but listen, do me the favor. Would you do me the favor uh, while, while we're right before we get into uh, the other parts of our worship service, would you do us the favor, do us the favor of sharing this? Listen, all, if you're watching on Facebook, all you have to do is hit the button share and post it to your news feed. And, and, and there you will allow people to worship with you. Uh, listen, we, we, we want to share what God is doing here at Amwell Baptist Church. Listen, so listen, if you do me a favor, before we go any further, go and share this on your page. Share this with your family, your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, you can share this by taking that link and, and you can send an email that it has. Uh, all you have to do is follow, follow the promptings on YouTube and you can watch and help others to worship and watch with you. So listen, let's go ahead and do that uh, so we can continue to invite and share and comment uh, as a part of our worship experience. Listen, I know and understand, brothers and sisters, that uh, virtual worship is just a different thing. But listen, one of the things that we've done 
uh, to try to make it more interactive uh, is to open up the chat. And, and so, you know, you can talk back to the preacher, comment on things that are blessing. You can say good morning to other people. Uh, listen, this, this is a new way of doing ministry, but it is a way that we can do it. And so, of course, we ask you to invite people uh, to, to like our page on Facebook, invite people to subscribe on YouTube as well. Uh, literally, uh, when you do that, you're helping spread the word and spread the gospel. That's literally a, a form of virtual evangelism. That's exactly what it is. And so uh, what I want uh, you to do and need you to do uh, is to help share this. We, we want to share every time uh, that, that, that God speaks to you and shares. And listen, share that uh, so others can be blessed and will be blessed. Uh, by what is shared here at the well. Listen, also, brothers and sisters, we are getting very close to our next drive-in, uh, which, of course, you know, based on the weather, uh, we, we'll, we'll be back first Sunday in September uh, to celebrate together. And so, of course, it'll be a time of, of praise and worship uh, and uh, it's time for fellowship. I mean, you know, we do our, our what has become a favorite of our uh our selfies for Aimwell, and so I'm grateful for that, and so I can't wait uh, for even more selfies, and every time I, I forget to bring my phone, and so listen, we want to go ahead and uh, get ready for that first Sunday of September, we're starting at 9 a.m., of course, so that we can avoid the heat wave that does inevitably come uh, during that time, and so we want to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we are uh, being being very uh, careful and respectful of your time as well as your well-being uh, during this time. So we're going to be there at 9. Listen, you'll be out of here, pulling out of the parking lot no later than 10.05. No later, if not earlier than 10.05. So we're excited about this. Of course, you know, we're going to be, be able to serve communion together and get ready uh, to go. And so we're, we're excited about that as well. Also, brothers and sisters, uh, if if you are uh, a guest, if you happen to be a guest, we have so many guests uh, that are part of our regular worship experience who are interactive. First of all, we want to say thank you uh, because during this virtual time, there are so many places that you could worship, but you chose to worship with us. And we want you to know we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We are grateful that you chose to virtually connect with us. And so, listen, if you are a guest today. Listen, don't be ashamed. We're not. We're just going to flood you with virtual love. So if you if you are a guest today, would you type the word guest? Type the word guest. Type the word guest. Um, you type that word guest for us. Uh, somebody from our team uh, will be responding to you uh, just to show show some love and some other members. Uh, would you go back and look, look, look through, look through? Uh, all of the comments and, and see if somebody says guess. If they said guess, you know what to do if you're a member of the well. We show love to our guests. We're so grateful that you chose to virtually uh, connect with us today. And today is going to be a refreshing experience. So listen, let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead. If you are a guest, if you're a guest, if you're a guest, go ahead. Don't be ashamed. Listen, we, we're not going to call you out. Uh, we just want to love you. And let you know uh, that we love the fact that you chose to worship with us today. Come on, go ahead for our guest, for our guest. Amen. Go ahead. Listen. And also, in addition to that, for those that are members of the world, we are so grateful, brothers and sisters, that you are continuing uh, to uh, worship and listen uh, and, and, and virtually connect with us. Listen, uh, we, we want to... Uh, to give some time for you to uh, in in our virtual chat room uh, to to go ahead and connect with at least three or four people just to say good morning and let them know that you're grateful um, that they are that they are a part of uh, this virtual worship today and you're excited that they logged on with you that they're watching with you so go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead and connect with somebody if you're a guest type guest we love you we're gonna connect to you also. Also, also, if you remember, go ahead and say good morning. Speak to somebody. Listen, don't be saved and stuck up. Go ahead and do it now. Some of y'all still looking at the screen. You ought to be typing now. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Type. Go ahead and type good morning and say something to somebody. Let them know that you're grateful that they are worshiping and watching with you today. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that now. 
go ahead and do that now. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? There you go. There you go. There you go. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you feel welcome. Hope you are. I feel welcome. You're our guest again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of that as well. Uh, listen, brothers and sisters, we are we are so, so excited uh, for another opportunity to share in God's worship and word uh, because he is due all glory. And so listen, brothers and sisters, right before we go into uh, our word and, and as well as our ensemble who is doing an amazing job. I don't know if you all have been paying attention. I said all week, but I feel like they deserve so much credit because they are working uh, so hard uh, to continue to uh, better themselves and continue to serve. And our praise ensemble sounds amazing. So I want to shout them out every single time I get a chance uh, because they're doing a great job. And then we're going to hear from them in a moment. Uh, but just a few things we need to get 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 through uh, prior to us going into uh, the word, uh, the worship, and the word. And I can't ex can't tell you how excited I am to share part two of the series I started last week uh, called "God Will Provide." And so I can't wait to get into uh, what God has to share. And I think it's a, a very interesting look on this text. And so I'm I'm excited about what God is going to share. Uh, through me today and hope that it's going to be a blessing to you. So we're going to continue that series, brothers and sisters. Uh, but before we do that, before we do that, I also want to tell you, as I've been said last week, uh, we are uh, trying to update our church roster. Listen, um, there are people who joined uh, uh, our church and we want to make sure that we have an up-to-date roster for our church. Uh, and so we have this, this thing called the Well Family Record. It's just simply... Uh, our way of making sure that our family roster record or family tree is up to date. And so listen, uh, maybe you've been members for 15, 20, 30 years. That's fine. Listen, if you have not already, I want to encourage you to go ahead and fill that out. Now, if you're currently virtually connected with us, all you have to do is just send us a message. We'll send you uh, the information that we're, that we're seeking from you. We just simply need your name, address. Uh, birthday, email address, and phone number. Just those those quick, short things just to make sure we have up-to-date information on you just in case we need to get in contact with you for anything or any reason. Uh, and, and of course, just to make sure we have updated information for you. And so uh, if you are currently virtually connected and you have not done that, you have not did it at the last drive-in, what you can do is go ahead and uh, you can either wait to after service or you can do it now. You can or you can type in the in the box that you need to complete your well family record information and you need to send your information, whatever you want to say. Uh, listen, what we need you to do, what we need you to do is to uh, you can either message us directly on, on our Facebook page and we will respond to you. Or you can also uh, you can do it on our website. We have a link there that you can. Uh, update your information and so listen there are so many different ways uh, if you are working in ministries your ministry leaders are going to be reaching out to you personally uh, to to get your information to make sure they, that we all have your update up-to-date information so listen we, we have a, a, a few different multiple ways that we can gather this because we need your information we need to make sure that we can get in contact with you uh, with the most updated information that we can. All we ask that you give us uh, the, the right number and uh, don't give us Pizza Hut on uh, on Schillinger's uh, uh, number. Amen. So uh, so uh, y'all y'all go ahead go ahead and do that. If you need to get, send us the information and you still haven't filled that information out, now if you already done it, thank you so much. But we want to make sure that we give everybody an opportunity to do that. Uh, and and the last thing, brothers and sisters, as we do every week. Uh, right before we go into the worship, listen, we're getting ready to give. Listen, there are four unique ways that you can give here at Amwell Baptist Church. One of those ways is through our P.O. Box, sending it to that. Uh, that information will, will, will be on as soon, uh, right before we get right into our worship and we're going to be up long enough so you can get the address. Also, if you uh, want to text to give, that number 
uh, will also all of that information will be there as well. Also, the third way, uh, the first way is PO box. The second way is through text to give. The third way is uh, through the Givelify app, which can be found on Google Play and on the Apple Store. And so you can look that up and you can find us, follow the promptings, and you can securely give there. Also, if you want to give on our website at thewellmobile.org, uh, you can give securely there. Just find the giving tab and you can securely give there. Are four unique ways to give. Uh, and, and whatever way you give, we ask that you continue to be faithful in your giving as you already have continued. And so I want to encourage you to continue to do that brothers and sisters. So listen, if you're going to get ready to give now, go ahead and hold your phone up or hold up your envelope that you're going to possibly mail in, or maybe you have a tithing envelope that you're going to hold up. Let's hold up symbolically as we give together as a church family. Let's get, let's hold our, let's hold it up and simply say, Lord, thank you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me. In Jesus name, we do pray. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to give now. I want to show it just to reiterate for those that are online that may, may or may not know the four unique ways to get here. They are right now. And right after you see this, we're going right into our praise ensemble and the word of God.
again, brothers and sisters. We are so grateful again uh, for our worship team who continues to lead us in worship. And so we're excited about that. Listen, let's go ahead and get into God's word today. Uh, as I told you last week, we're starting a series uh, entitled God Will Provide. Just looking at various instances where God uh, provided for his own. So, brothers and sisters, I, I am, um, most of uh, my church knows, or most of our church know, you all know, uh, whenever God lays, me, lays on my heart to stay some, to be somewhere and to stay somewhere, it's because he continues to want to speak in a certain area and speak to a specific need that happens to be for somebody. And so, listen, I don't take these opportunities for granted, though we are virtually. Uh, I'm on assignment today uh, as I continue to do what the Lord has uh, equipped me and laid out for me to do today. Listen, we're, we're going to be in 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is God will provide part two. God will provide part two. Just so you understand, brothers and sisters, just an overview of what 2 Kings is about. God sent the prophet Elijah to tell King Ahab, the seventh king of Israel, that a terrible drought would come upon Israel because of his disobedience. Get this, Ahab's evil wife, Jezebel, was so angry that she started having prophets of the Lord hunted down and killed. The Lord sent Elijah into hiding by a brook of water. And the Lord kept Elijah safe. Twice each day, the Lord had bread and meat delivered to Elijah by unusual means, by ravens. Then the brook uh, would give him water and sustenance to survive. So did you get that? This, this is what's going on with Elijah. But at once, the brook, the brook dried up. The Lord sent Elijah to the home of a poor widow. And miraculously, during the time Elijah stayed at the home of the widow, she never ran out of flour or oil to make bread. When the widow's son died, Elijah raised him from the dead, and the Lord took care of Elijah. Many years have passed since the nation of God divided into two separate kingdoms, Israel and Judah. And over the years, there would be some really uh, evil and ungodly rulers that will be a part of their history. At the time of this text, Ahab, again, was the king of Israel. He worshipped false gods and was married to an evil woman by the name of Jezebel. He even built altars and places of worship to Baal and other gods. And Jezebel, again, just to reiterate, tried to kill off other prophets. But you must understand, Elijah was from a small town by the name of Gilead, located on the eastern side of Jordan, where God sent him to Ahab to warn him. But brothers and sisters, what's interesting about this warning Instead of listening to the man of God, he allowed his wife to influence him. And so she says that she's going to kill him. Now, brothers and sisters, God knew Ahab would try to blame everything on, July, on Elijah. So he sent him to a safe place. He sent him to what is called in the text, the wilderness. Now, brothers and sisters, I, I think it's worth noting here that when we look at the life of Elijah, first of all, I think it's worth noting here that there are times in our lives where there are brooks that dry up. Can I tell you something? First of all, brothers and sisters, uh, the, the equivalence of brooks drying up is, is simply when God has sent you to a place or sent you even in, in a certain relationship or friendship, and, and somehow what kept it alive, the, the water, the, the, the sustenance of what kept it going, 
seems to dry up. Certainly, I'm talking to somebody who has had that experience. You're working on a job, and it seems like your brook has dried up on that job. You, you, you've been even in relationships and friendships, and it seems like God has allowed certain brooks that he seemed to have directed to you, directed you to, to dry up. But brothers and sisters, I love this. I love this. I love this because uh, the brook drying up is not a sign that things are done for you. It just simply means that you're, that things are done here. I wish I had some help right there. That whenever your brook dries up, it doesn't mean that God is done with you, but God is done doing what he's going to do at the place you're at. Can I tell you somebody, your biggest frustration is that the brook has dried up, but you keep trying to keep it filled with water. You keep trying to keep it going instead of seeing the sign that God is trying to show you. God has said, I let it dry up for a reason because your season has come to an end here. Perhaps that's what God is doing in your life. He's trying to let you know through seeing that the brook, the sustenance, and the way to keep it going has dried up. And since that has dried up, he's trying to send a clear message to you that it's time to go. I need somebody to talk to me here. Because when stuff starts to dry up, it may just be a sign that God is saying it's time to move on. Would, would you go ahead and encourage somebody and say, it, it may just be time to move on. Because when God allows it to dry up, you got to understand, brothers and sisters, that, that, that despite the fact that he led you there, if he let it dry up, that means there's another place he wants for you to be. I love this, brothers and sisters, because, and I love this because Elijah is in this precarious predicament. And the Bible says, once Jezebel sends a message to him and she says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. He runs and God sends him into uh, the wilderness, brothers and sisters. But again, we learned last week that, that there are some wildernesses that we end up in that are because of our wildness. Uh, you, 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 you understand uh, as, as we discussed last week, uh, the children of Israel ended up in a wilderness because of their wildness, their, their inability to listen and be directed by God. So they were wild, right? But, but in this instance, there are some wilderness experiences, brothers and sisters, that are not because of your wildness. Uh, but, but I want to suggest it is sometimes because of your obedience. What you need to understand, brothers and sisters, that Elijah has to go into hiding because he, he understands uh, that, that, that he had to say to Ahab what God told him to do. Can I tell you, there are some wilderness experiences that are not because of sin, uh, but are simply because of, of, of obedience. Now, I know that may be problematic for somebody that perhaps is virtually connected with us today because you're saying, Pastor Trey, listen, I can handle if my sins and my wildness uh, led me into a wilderness, but I'm struggling because now you're telling me if I do what God told me to do, I still may end up in a wilderness. Yes, you don't believe me? The Bible says in, in the case of, of his own son, he was, he was, he was literally uh, sinless. You, you, you literally hear how he came uh, to the river and John the Baptist was there and he said, there, uh, there I see, behold, the name of God, uh, which shall take away the stains and the sins of the world. And, and, and simply he baptized him. And the Bible says that, that the whole Trinity came up. They said that God spoke out of an audible voice from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then the spirit was there. Uh, it is descended upon his shoulder in the form of a dove. And then you have the son of God, Jesus Christ. The Trinity is there all at the same time. And so you see this wonderful baptism experience. So you see this wonderful affirmation of who Jesus was. But as soon as he got baptized, the Bible says he went into the wilderness and was tested for 40 days. Can I tell you? 
Sometimes obedience, sometimes following God leads you to wilderness experiences. And can I tell you, don't you ever start to question whether or not you were not obedient because sometimes obedience will take you to those places. But the truth is, I would rather be in the wilderness for obedience than I would be a wilderness for my disobedience. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that the blessing of God is that even when our obedience leads us on the path of being in certain wilderness experiences, we can say like the psalmist that, yea, do I walk through my wilderness, I will fear no evil because, here's the, count, here's the shout, the Lord is with me. And that is exactly what happens in the life of Elijah when he finds himself in a wilderness that not that his sin got him in, but his, his devotion to God. And here it is. I love this, brothers and sisters. Bible says that when he goes into this wilderness, Bible says that, that, that Elijah finds a restful place under a juniper tree. Did you catch that? Bible says that, that, that Elijah found rest. Somebody shout rest. He found rest in the wilderness. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait just one minute. I just told you that, that Jezebel had promised to kill him. And she had already demonstrated that she was serious about killing every prophet of God. But brothers and sisters, he's on the run for his life. But somehow Elijah finds a place to rest. How, how can you find rest in a restless place? How can you find sleep and enough peace and enough, enough serenity to close your eyes and not wake up every five minutes? Bible says he goes to sleep. Now, here's the interesting part. The juniper tree is not a coniferous tree uh, uh, in, 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 in its real sense. The Hebrew word for this tree or bush is a rather, not, understand this. It was a shrub found in abundance of southern Palestine. It had long, slender branches with small leaves and provided very poor shade or protection from the sun. So it goes with our man-made solutions from which we seek shelter, re refuge, solutions to our pains. Notice, brothers and sisters, He's under this juniper tree, which is really a bush. And there is no sufficient shade. There's no sufficient uh, section where he should find a peaceful place out of the sun and a shady place out of the sun. But brothers and sisters, the shout is he found sleep in a place where he shouldn't have found sleep. Can I tell you, one of the things God does to provide for us, even in seasons of stress, strain, and struggle, he gives us a place to rest. I tell you, God ordained sleep and rest as necessary, get this, for our survival and ability to function so the Lord allowed a time of sleep before he brought on the next phase of his provision for Elijah. Did you get what I just said? The Lord knew that Elijah's journey with him and his ministry was not over. So because his ministry wasn't over, he gave him a place to rest. Can I tell you, child of God, that in this moment, in this pandemic, whatever you do, don't allow anything or any person or any place to take you out of the routine of finding rest. Somebody shout rest. Rest, brothers and sisters, 
is so important and vital to your spiritual walk because you can't be any good to God if you're constantly drained and constantly tired. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, you have too much to do not to get rest. Did you hear what I just said? I need you to tap yourself and say, I have too much to do not to get the appropriate amount of rest. Can I tell you, there have been some studies, brothers and sisters, uh, that, that, that talk about uh, how anxiety and other, other sleep, uh, other stress-related uh, things that happen in our life that affect our sleep. And the shout of the day is that this tree wasn't a safe tree, but because he knew that God was with him, he found some rest. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, don't you ever allow anything to stop you from getting your rest. I know this; these times are so challenging for you and I. And we are struggling because we are struggling because sometimes we have so many other things on our mind. Maybe you've been like me. And I, I, I at times, and my, my team knows this, I at times have trouble falling asleep. Partially because my, my mind is constantly going and maybe you have that same problem. You, 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 you stayed up and it's not always bad stuff, but sometimes your mind just doesn't know when to fall asleep. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, there are some times in our lives where stress, strain, and struggle will sometimes rob us of our sleep. But can I tell you, whatever you have on your mind, whatever that trouble is, can I, can I remind you of something? That the Bible simply says that he that will watch it over Israel neither slumbers nor does he sleep. In other words, if God is already up, if God doesn't need an alarm clock, if God doesn't need to drink coffee to stay up, if, if, if God is constantly, he doesn't have to take no dose. If, if, if God is, it doesn't, have, doesn't need an energy drink. If God doesn't need any of those things to stay asleep, to stay awake, then why in the world are you still awake? Don't you know that you serve a God that's, that never goes to sleep? The reason why he's, he never goes to sleep because he, he's looking out for us 24 hours a day. And so brothers and sisters, let me say it in, in, the, in the best way I know how. Take yourself to sleep. I, I know it's stressful and I know it's strained and I know that you're, that you're tempted to want to sideline yourself and worry and, and carry uh, tomorrow's stress into tonight's sleep. But can I tell you uh, that you may not understand uh, this, this right now, but you are literally ruining your night's sleep worried about something that hadn't even happened yet. I need you to get some rest. That, that, that's, that's one of the things that God provides. God says, he says that, 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 don't know, that, that when you're looking for financial pr provisions, understand that some of my best provisions are things you take for granted. It's things like the ability to get some rest. So what I need you, brothers and sisters, I need you to do this. I need you to just say to yourself, get some rest. Get some rest. I love what 1 Kings Chapter 19, verse 6 says, it says not only does he find some rest, but then he, the Bible says in verse number 6, he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's, it's too many shouts in here, brothers and sisters, for me, for me to run past. Them. Here's the first shout. Verse 5b uh, verse 5 talks about there's an angel. Hmm. Uh, and, and behold, there was an angel. And, and the Bible says that this angel supplies a meal for him. Now, wait, wait, wait just one minute. God sends an angel. God sends somebody that works for him. And he says, what, what, what I'm going to do I love you so much, Elijah. I love you so much, Trey. I love you so much, member of the well. I love you so much that I'm going to provide for you an angel that I'm going to use 
to confirm what I'm up to in your life. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes uh, God sends angels in the form of people. Form of people who can encourage you. Form of people who can who can confirm that God is working in their life. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? And can I tell you, not only can God do that for you, but God will also use you to do it for other people. Can I tell you? I can't tell you how many times. I can tell you about one instance that I've probably shared with you. I'll share it again just for this moment because sometimes we get so lost in biblical language and we hear words like angels and we think we expect these 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 uh, ghost-like mystical beings to show up. But the truth is, God does have those. But even sometimes, God will use angels in the form of people that can use that he, God will use to confirm what it is. And so that simply means, brothers and sisters, that if you you may be the the, the angel somebody else needs, uh, you may be the angel that 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 someone else needs. And God says, I'm waiting on you to be an angel to them, to confirm to them of what I am trying to say to them. Can I tell you, this is this happened to me a few years ago. I was in Atlanta, and I still lived in Georgia, and I was out to eat with a friend. And um, as we were there eating, I was getting ready to eat, and I was really, really hungry. Can't, couldn't wait to dive into those uh, baby back ribs. And so I was getting ready to, to get on the ribs and uh, family of family of four walk in, a mother and three children. And that was this compelling, nagging thought in my head and on my heart to pay for these people's meal. I, I, I didn't know them. I, I was in Atlanta. I lived in Macon. Didn't know these people from anything. And so I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I had already been spending money that weekend anyway. So I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped out right now. And so I said, no, pay for that meal. I said, all right. I said, okay. So I ended up uh, paying for their meal. Told them we actually have the same waitress. And I said to them, uh, I said to the waitress, I said, listen, when they get through order, make sure they make sure you ask them whatever they want. Get it. The lady got whatever they wanted. And I said, bring me the bill. I pay for it. But don't tell them until I left. Uh, so she said, okay, I need to pay for our meal, uh, pay for their meal, and then left. Left and go uh, go to my car. As soon as I got to my car, the waitress comes out and she says, uh, sir, sir, you've got to come back in. Now, mind you, didn't tell her I was a preacher. Ne never told her at the time I was a youth pastor. Never told her anything. I just, just a random guy paying for a meal. So I paid, paid for it left. And so she says, sir, this lady is, is bawling, crying. Please come back uh, and say something to her. And I said, I walked in and true enough, the lady was crying. And uh, while she was crying, I asked her, I said, I said, ma'am, what's, why are you crying so much? I said, I just paid for a meal. And she said, well, sir, what you don't understand is that on Saturday, we had just buried my husband, my children's father. So he'd been sick and he just, we just buried him on Saturday. And we've been in the house since Saturday. And uh, tonight I told my kids, we're getting out of the house. And God is going to give us a sign that he's with us. And so this is the first time we've been out. And I show up to this restaurant and somebody pays for our meal. True story. At that day, I was an angel that was used by God. So there are two, 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 two takeaways with this particular aspect of the text. One, know that when God is moving in your life. God will send strangers. God will send people who you don't know, never met, and they'll be so personally assigned to you that it seems like God tapped them on the shoulder to give you an encouraging word, to to, to slide a blessing in your hand, to, 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 to encourage you. You'll be surprised. God will use strangers to bless you. To, to, put, to confirm that he has his hand on you. Here's the second takeaway. The second takeaway is this. You may be the angel somebody else needs. You may, need, may be the stranger. So listen, I need you to, you, you got to have a certain level of spiritual sensitivity and you can't be selfish because sometimes, sometimes if we are selfish, we'll miss what God wants to do through us. Can you imagine, had I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to hold on to this, this, this little money that 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 God that I, that I have, 
what what would have happened? What would what would have happened had I not have been obedient and done what I did? Not not for show. Sure. Again, to this day, if the the lady I'm sure remembers the experience. She still doesn't know who I am. I never gave my name. I never told her my profession. But but can you imagine what would have happened had I not have done that? Here's a sister who now had confirmation after burying her husband, father of her children. He, she has clear confirmation that God says, I see you and I know what you're going through. So two, two, two takeaways, brothers and sisters. God will use a stranger. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm even praying now that, that there'll be some stranger stories this week. That you're going to be going about your regular day and God will give you some stranger blessings. So you see, sometimes we, we teach our kids stranger danger, but sometimes God used stranger blessings to, 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 to work through and to be confirmation of what he can do in our lives. And the second thing is, brothers and sisters, you may be the stranger. You may be the angel that God wants to use to bless somebody. So if God tells you to bless somebody, bless them. If God tells you to give something, if God tells you to pray for somebody, if God put somebody on your heart, call them, check on them. You don't even know what, what that one single, what appears to be random feeling may be attached to for somebody else's life. Here's the last thing. Bible says that not only is God's provision in this, in this wilderness, uh, again, the fact that he gives him sleep and he assigns strangers, angels, and dispatches him at his very location. Let, let, let me stop here because this, this wasn't in my notes. I'm trying to move on. But isn't it interesting that he's in a random wilderness, but the angel shows up exactly where he is. It, isn't, it, it, isn't it good to know that, that, that God has a GPS location on me? And wherever I am emotionally, wherever I am in the world, he knows where to find me. So, somebody, y'all, you ought to help, help me preach this. Uh, if, 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 I, I'm trying not to go there, but, but somebody needs to help me preach this and simply say he knows where to find me. Yeah, he, he knows where to find me. He, he knows exactly where I am emotionally. He knows where I am, whether I live on Schillinger or where I live in Pritchard. He, he, he knows where I am. Here's the last thing. Elijah, he gets, he gets again, sleep in a place that he should be sleepless. He gets an angel, a stranger. In this place where nobody else is, 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 is currently living. Here's the last thing. God gives him the provision of substance. Here it is, or food. Elijah needed some special instruction from the Lord. But again, he first needed physical strength through nourishment. He was in no condition to listen or take in the word of God. Twice he is told to eat and drink, and twice he is allowed to sleep. Did you get that? Twice he's told to eat and drink, and twice he's told to get sleep. Again, we are reminded that as human beings, we were designed to function in all aspects of our being, body, soul, and spirit. Though the spirit is the foundation and, and vital for our overall well-being and effective, effectiveness as the Lord's servant, still all aspects of our makeup need care, and each part is affected by the other parts. Can I, can I simply sum that up? You are human. You're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. So listen, hear, hear me. This is the most spiritual advice I can give you today. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. One, 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 one person simply said, be kind to yourself for the world is not kind. Listen, take care of yourself. God, God gave him the ability to take care of himself. There, there's a level of self-care that comes in this passage. But, but, but don't forget it, brothers and sisters. 
God provides for him differently than he did before. And at the brook, there were ravens. He could see them flying in. But the Bible says every time he woke up from sleeping, he woke up to, 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 to food that had already been prepared. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, that the provisions of God that, that God is making for me, that I don't have to always be awake and aware of what he's doing. See, 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 Elijah knew the schedule. They, he knew around lunchtime the ravens were coming. He knew around dinner time or breakfast. He knew their times. But can you imagine going to sleep hungry and waking up to provisions? That's exactly how God is. God says, I, I do my best work when you don't even expect for me to do it. That, that tells me, brothers and sisters, that some provisions that God provides are not on, on, on a schedule. They, they're just random. It, it seems like as soon as you woke up on that Monday, that's when God had that job waiting for you. As soon as, as, soon as you, you were looking for something, you, you went to sleep, or you, I'm telling you, you need to understand that sometimes, he, I, and I'm trying not to shout, God does his best work while you sleep. Can I tell you, I, I remember, I remember driving in my hometown, and I remember uh, that there was a big, uh, there was a big hole in the middle of the road. Apparently, it's a sinkhole that was causing problems. They had to literally reroute traffic into other lanes, uh, and so this is actually on my route to my job at the time. So I remember uh, traffic was backed up for 15 minutes, and so I was really just irritated, and, and I said to myself, man, I hope that they fix it. And, I, and I, when I rolled back by on my way home that evening, that hole was still there. Uh, but somewhere between the time where I went home, ate, and went to sleep, and got up and went back on that same road, somebody had fixed the hole. What I didn't understand is, brothers and sisters, that while I was sleeping, someone else was working. Can I tell you, that's the kind of God that you serve. That, that while you're sleeping, God is doing his best work. God, God is working while you're sleeping. That's what you need to understand, brothers and sisters. So that so because God is working while you're sleeping, don't take, don't take what you're worried about into your sleep tonight. Don't, don't take whatever you may be worried about that may happen Wednesday or may happen Thursday. Listen, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have the tendency. To take in, to take on problems that have not even happened yet. And just in case it may be a problem, you just never know that that was something you were worried about. You having to encounter the next day. God could have already fixed it by the time your alarm clock goes off. Because you serve a God who is always working while you are sleeping. Can I tell you, child of God? Sometimes we end up in places of stress and strain, wilderness experiences because of our obedience to God. But can I tell you, I would rather be in a wilderness with God than a wilderness without him. Can I tell you, we're in this pandemic, brothers and sisters, and it feels like a wilderness. It feels like a place, a scary place. Can I tell you, there's so many things that are struggle and strain. And, and can I tell you, one of the biggest blessings that we miss in the wilderness is that we are surviving it. I know it's depressing. I know there are some that have succumbed to suicide. There are some that have given up and they have failed to have hope in God. But can I tell you, child of God, God will provide. I, 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 hope, I hope something to share. Were you blessed today by this? But I, I got one last thing to say about Elijah in this wilderness, and I and I and I promise you, we'll, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it, take it to the house. Here it is. Well, some of you all are already at home, but you know what I mean. Um, here's my shout. Elijah spends a significant time in the wilderness. He's sleeping, right? At at least twice he sleeps. Like at least two times he's eating. Now the wilderness. It's not a heavily populated place with people, right? But the wilderness is populated with predators. 
Wish I had some help. There are coyotes and wolves and there are other other predatorial animals that that lurk in the wilderness and they're always looking for prey. Can I tell you, one of the shouts about Elijah in this wilderness experience is that there was things that could have killed him and by, by, by all means should have killed him. But God kept him in the midst of this time. From things, from dangers, I love what this song says, seen and unseen. Can I tell you, there are so many things you're not even aware of that have happened this year that could have killed you. But if you can hear my voice, it's a sign that God has been with you during this pandemic. That God is with you during your wilderness experience. Can I tell you? Don't you lose another ounce of sleep, another day of sleep, another moment of sleep. God will provide. He already has provided. He is providing. I need you to hear this, brothers and sisters. Somebody, I believe God led me to do this because somebody may be in the wilderness and you've not done anything wrong. You've not seen the transgression. That's not the reason why you're there. But, but you're there because you did what God told you to do. But that's okay. Can I tell you? That even in those wildernesses, God will keep his hand on you. And so I want to pray, brothers and sisters, uh, today. Uh, and I pray, uh, if, if you are blessed today, say, say, say this, this blessed me today. So I want, you to, I want you to say that, this blessed me today. This blessed me. If it blessed you, I want you to go ahead and type that. We're going to get ready to pray now. I want to close in prayer because I, I honestly believe that this... This series, this these series of messages, and I hope something was shared today that, that really spoke to your heart and spoke to your mind. What I need you to do, I need you to say, let us know you're blessed. If you also were blessed, would you do us the favor of sharing this again? Share this with some family or friends and share them. Let them be blessed by the worship and the word that you experienced at the well today. Here we go. We're going to get ready to pray now. But I want to pray for somebody's rest somebody's sleep because somebody here is struggling with finding rest because you're worried so much so i want to pray that tonight you get the best sleep of your life let's let's bow together god first of all we thank you for your word we thank you we thank you for the revelation that you continue to download even in the moment of preaching i pray god that something today blessed your people in a special way, spoke to their hearts and their minds. Now, God, as we continue to serve, as we continue to navigate this pandemic, help us to get rest. Help us to take care of ourselves because you provide opportunities for us to not only sleep, but also for self-care. Help us to take care of ourselves because we still have so much to do for you that we need to take care of ourselves and find some places to rest. So for somebody that hasn't been able to find sleep the last few weeks, last few months, or late, even since the pandemic has started, God, tonight, I ask that you give them the best sleep of their life. Let them wake up refreshed and renewed, God. I ask that you convict somebody who's not taking care of themselves, who's not being good to themselves, God. God, help them to understand that if they don't treat themselves right that you will not be able to use them if something is wrong with them and so god help them to take appropriate measures for self-care to take care of themselves because the better they are the better they can be used by you but help us all god to take care of ourselves to find places of rest to find places where we should take care of ourselves so that we can be better used by you it's in jesus name we do pray Everybody say amen. Amen. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? I hope I didn't keep you too long. Listen, brothers and sisters, thank you for worshiping with us today. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.